Hi, I'm Michael Greenberg. Konstantinos Kalas, Nikos Vasilakis, and I would like to talk to you about the Unix shell. It's been 50 years. And you might say to yourself, who is this guy? 50 years? It's been 50 years and he's talking to us about the shell? Why would you even program in the shell anymore? What's wrong with you? Can't we replace all this with like something, something cloud? It's like, okay, yeah, maybe. Hey, um, Konstantinos, uh, the build broke on Mac OS. Can you help me out? Well, that sucks. Check out this Docker container that I made. This should work for you and your Mac. It's so reproducible. Sats, wow. Oh, cool. Nice. I'll, I'll check it out. Seems, this seems cool. Okay, cool. Let's, let's see what's inside this container. Oh, oh that's weird. It's just... It's just these little shells. What? I don't get it. No matter how you slice it, whatever modern ops hotness you're using, the inside, the beating heart, is the shell. All of these things, Docker, Vagrant, your CI, they're all running shell scripts. Shell scripts remain the glue that actually put all of our systems together. A flip side to that is that the shell is actually versatile and ubiquitous, is maybe a nicer way to say it. It's a programming language with a broad range of usage and application, ranging from interactive command at a time stuff through custom scripts, all the way up to serious system scripts, like the Deb Bootstrap script for building a, a Debian uh, package system, or, you know, uh, SysV and it, if you're not on the system D bandwagon. Shell, these shell scripts are everywhere. At the same time, we would be lying if we said the shell isn't showing its age. It definitely is. Uh, the defaults for the shell don't exactly align with modern systems. The defaults often lead to slower or less safe scripts. We could live in a better world. You know, one where the shell knew about parallelism and distribution and incrementality and all these um, great safe improvement things that we could want. What's stopping us from improving the shell? I would say there's two things. Thing one is the shell language itself. It's complicated. The shell and the utilities that really make the shell the shell are described in hundreds of pages of pretty inscrutable standard ease. It's a tricky spec. It's got the usual unspec UB issues that you see in every language spec, but there are also challenging portability issues uh, that anyone thinking about the shell is going to face. So there's some nice progress on this front. Um, the smoosh work, a semantics I did with, uh, with an undergrad at Popple uh, in 2020, uh, gives us sound foundations for thinking about how the shell works, right? It's a tested semantics that lets us think and do that usual PL thing. Uh, there's another surprisingly useful contribution here is that we get direct parser bindings, which lets us directly hook into a shell. These two things are both nice enablers for getting to sort of think about the shell clearly. So there's some hope on this front. Thing two is that commands are black boxes, right? It's hard to reason about the arbitrary commands that the shell runs. When the shell runs a command, it's just calling exec VE, and a lot of exec VE's behavior is actually deferred to the kernel. It's a pretty complicated setup. Uh, you might be wondering why you're seeing this picture. This is a flight recorder, what people call the black box, but it turns out orange is the new black, apparently. So there's some progress on this front, too. Tools like Pash and Posh uh, have a notion of command annotations that really help wrangle these. So what are these? Oh, hey, Nikos, check this out. I wrote this cool uh, shell script for data processing. Oh, nice. How long did it take? It only takes 10 hours. And then I get to see which broken command arguments uh, cause me to generate 10 gigabytes of garbage. What? I mean, 10 gigabytes of garbage is OK, but 10 hours? We could have given you the exact same garbage in under an hour and with a proof that it's the same. So Pash provides some pretty incredible speedups for shell scripts by parallelizing them. It's an ahead of time translation of commands into better versions of themselves, a sort of command line glow up. Um, if you look at the graphs at the bottom, you can see that the, the speedups we, uh, they're getting, uh, this is Nikos and Konstantinos and a few others, do, do some really, really remarkable improvements. The secret sauce here is that Pash actually knows a ton about commands. It can detect different command usages and optimize the invocations to sort of run appropriately parallel or on multiple streams or what have you by just sort of keeping track of what every command does. Posh does the same thing, but for distribution rather than parallelization. Again, the secret sauce is you got to know about commands. You got to know what they're going to do to be able to optimize them. So they also use a notion of command annotation to be able to look at particular command invocations and do something better for them. So I think there's some real hope here, right? Formal semantics, command annotations, we can do it. We can, we can rehabilitate the shell. So, um, 
So great. It's PL time, baby. Let's turn that crank. Um, let's see what my colleagues in PL think we can use these semantics for to improve the shell's performance. Hey, um, how can we use this formal semantics to make shell scripts safer? You should do a static analysis. How should we make the shell super fast? Do a static analysis. Mm, how to check for correctness? The type system. How about incremental? You should do a static analysis. How do we get distribution? Static analysis. Okay, all right, so like uh, like we checked, a static analysis is gonna be pretty bad. It's really, it's really, it's really hard to know even what the arguments are gonna be. Right, conventional static techniques are not gonna work here. Symbolic execution gets you some of the way, but once something's imprecise, cascading imprecision means it's a really hard row to hoe doing this work ahead of time. Right, it's gonna be really, really hard to reason statically about the shell. So a key technique here is to work with the grain of the shell. The shell is extremely dynamic, one of the most dynamic languages. You can think of you know, the, your, the shell environment, that's your stack, and then the file system is your heap. Talk about dynamic. Runtime is the right time. Dynamic interposition is the thing that's gonna let us work with the shell, working with its dynamism, rather than trying to work against the shell's grain. The shell is actively hostile to static reasoning. The key idea is that this kind of dynamic interposition, powering a system we're building now, will enable the research community to pursue a variety of exciting new directions for the shell. What directions might those be? Pash is ahead of time, um, and it gets some really phenomenal speed ups, but it also gets some slowdowns, right? Compilation has an overhead, parallelism has an overhead, your particular machine configuration may not want to run in a certain way. So it's possible to actually use Pash to get a slower program. Now, if you can look at, say, dynamically file sizes or available system resources, phase of the moon, whatever it is, you can look at that at when you're running the command to decide, hey, is this going to be worth it to parallelize or not? There's also a great story here for incrementality, which is sort of an expressive, expressivity and performance boost. So the idea is incremental recomputation with automatic dependency detection. This is a thing that sort of already exists in general purpose languages, but in the shell, you need to work in a much larger environment. Dynamic interposition is, again, really the key ingredient here. Um, you can imagine using tools like ptrace to get you know, facts on the ground in terms of which file reads and writes are happening in processes a shell script runs, uh, and then uh, using incrementality that way. Uh, a use case that we have in mind would be building on something like Rattle from OOPSA 2020, uh, where um, they, have, they write forward build scripts in sort of a Haskell DSL, uh, and then they can automatically incrementalize those and parallelize those when they run them. There's other great things we can get in the sort of safety correctness world. So one example project is the Coley project. Um, they have a paper at Takas in 2020 where they're an analyzing Debian package um, package scripts. Uh, there's also shell linters and static checkers like shell check and oils uh, bash subsetting. Um, these are great tools. Coley is symbolic execution. Um, and I think actually dynamic interposition still makes a lot of sense here, even if you want to reason about sort of all possible package installs. Uh, so you could watch live installs with full data and sort of monitor them uh, using this, um, this form of interposition. But then semi-symbolic approaches make a lot of sense too. Fully reasoning symbolically uh, on these packages is very challenging. So the Coley tool has some timeouts and can't always reason exactly about the file system. It's very hard to reason about uh, statically. But if you have the exact state of the file system before the command runs, you can do a much better job. Finally, there's real room to improve the experience of people onboarding on the shell, people learning to use the shell in the first place. So you see tools in the academic community like uh, NoFAC, but then also sort of industry tools. You could, this is what lets you know there's a real demand for these things. Um, Explain Shell, Bro, the fuck, there are many, many tools for helping people work with the shell and helping people learn it. There's lots of opportunities. All of the existing tools are effectively syntactic and they don't always even use exactly the shell's parser. You get linters like ShellCheck, but also these example-based explainers and helpers. I think we can do much better by talking to the shell directly. You know, with command annotations and, and some sort of tutor mode for your shell, you could help someone really come up to speed uh, quickly with uh, this vital and important tool. Today, we talked to you about how 50 years on, the shell is so ubiquitous as to be unavoidable, a critical piece of systems glue. We told you about recent research in PL and systems uh, that enable some exciting new directions. And finally, we told you our plan for these directions uh, about dynamic interposition, which we think is the key way to work with the shell to pursue a variety of exciting new avenues for research. Please read the paper for more. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And here's to 50 more years of the Unix shell.